and welcome back to my channel. My name is Elena Boyd, if you have not been here before, and I have lived with ankylosing spondylitis for over a decade, so I talk a lot about that here on my channel. Um, and today I'm actually holding my microphone because I had some issues attaching it, uh, so I hope this works, and uh, if you're wondering what this thing is, it's just my mic, uh, and I hope you can still hear me okay. So, um, as always, this is not considered any, you know, medical advice or anything. I'm not a doctor. I'm just sharing my personal experience with uh, what works and what doesn't work for me personally after living with AS for 10 years or 10, 11 years, whatever it is now, over a decade. So today I wanted to make a video about five things to avoid when you have ankylosing spondylitis. So... Yeah, there are quite a few things that we should be a little bit careful with uh, when we live with a condition like this. So, number one, do not be sedentary. So, keep moving, right? This can be pretty difficult because, as you know, AS is a type of inflammatory arthritis and you can have a lot of pain in your spine and your hips and your SI joints and your knees and shoulders and all the joints in your body, basically. So it can be really hard to move and it can be hard to be motivated to move, but it's really important that we do move. And even if it's something simple, like taking a short walk or doing some, you know, wrist circles or ankle circles or hip circles or just something to uh, get some movement into our joints and um, our body is really, really important. So if you're sedentary, the pain most likely will get worse and you'll also get stiffer and stiffer, right? So you, you want to try to keep moving and I know it can be painful and I actually, last week I did a video on that. So what to do when it hurts to exercise, right? Because that's a very common thing with AS, but you, you have to keep moving in whatever way you are able to. Maybe it's swimming, maybe it's, um, you know, even foam rolling, gentle stretching, things like that can make a huge difference. So Again, tip number one on things to avoid when you have ankylosing spondylitis is avoid being sedentary. You have to keep moving. Number two is try to avoid stress to the best of your ability. Now, this can be a pretty tricky one, obviously. I know that, you know, a lot of people um, out there, you know, you have kids, you're working full time, it's just kind of crazy, right? Maybe going through a house renovation or finding a new place to live or moving or whatever. Life is just madness sometimes and I get that. But I will say to the best of your ability, try to reduce your stress. So whether that is, you know, um, if you have a partner asking them to help you with chores or help with the kids, or if you have kids that are old enough, have them help you with the chores. Um, at work, how can you, uh, how can you uh, make it as least stressful as possible? And I understand. I I used to have a have a, a very stressful job myself, and it's it's not always something you can you can um, affect. But uh, use your lunch break. Go outside. Take a walk. Sit outside. Sit in silence. You know. Um, try to the best of your ability, not eating at your desk and, you know, running between meetings. And I know it's really, really hard. I, I've lived that life for a long time, but anything you can do to reduce your stress. So maybe it's, you know, if you have really rushed mornings, um, can you go to bed half an hour or an hour earlier and then get up half an hour or an hour earlier so that you can start your morning nice and easy, right? Like try to avoid like if you know you have a long commute and you're always running late, leave your house 20 minutes earlier. Whatever you have to do, right, to minimize that fight or flight response in your body where you get so worked up that you're, you know, about to explode because that kind of stuff is really, really inflammatory. Um, and for people like us with this condition, it's, it's really, it actually, it creates more inflammation in your body. So you can also do little things like not checking your phone or watching the news first thing when you wake up. When you first wake up for like the first 30 to 60 minutes, if you can fill your mind with calm things, like um, do a visualization meditation, have your cup of coffee or your tea and just sit in silence, read your Bible, do your, 
you know, whatever spiritual, spiritual habits you have, you know, can you do that first thing in the morning instead of logging onto social media or checking your emails or watching the news? Because if you do that the first thing when you wake up, you're just going to get bombarded with all this negative energy and it's going to stress you out so much, even if you don't realize it, but it's really, really not a great thing for your brain to get bombarded with all that kind of information um, first thing in the morning. So that would be like minimizing stress in general, but then also little things like that. Get off your screens first hour after you wake up and then same thing before bed. Try to put your phone away like two hours before you go to bed um, and that might help you sleep a little bit better, which is also really important. Yeah, minimizing stress the best you can. Um, just maybe planning it better or getting help if you need to or, you know, just finding little pockets throughout your day where you can just kind of step aside, even if it's just five minutes, take a breath, you know, maybe just stretch a little bit, move around a little bit, just find those moments of mindfulness throughout your day. And then number three on my list of things to avoid is, this might be controversial, but I would say stay out of the online forums for AS and chronic illnesses in general. So I have been on those forums and I know that it's you want to be on there because you get this sense of community, right? The problem with these forums, and maybe, you know, maybe you've found different ones than I have, but the forums that I've been on, it's so negative. People just, they become their disease and they just focus on it. And it's all about how the disease is progressing, how bad they're feeling this day, what else the doctor said, all the treatments. So, and it's kind of just, energy flows where attention goes or something like that, right? And so if you keep focusing on how sick you are and how much pain you have and you're even in these forums and you, you listen to other people talk about how sick they are and how much pain they're in, that is not a good thing. And so I know some people really, really like to be on those forums and I, I understand that, but please try to find some other sense of community, like join a, I don't know, like a, a, a knitting club or find a yoga studio and join like a yoga community or like find some other sense of community versus the chronic illness community. And I, I'm, I'm part of it. I have chronic illness and I'm, I'm, you know, I have ankylosing spondylitis as well, but I don't want that to be what defines me. I mean, to a certain extent, yes, it's part of who I am in a way, right? But it's not, I'm not going to sit on Facebook talking about how, how ill I am. Um, it's just, I don't think that's very productive. And I don't think that that helps anybody, to be honest. It's good to have that sense of community, but you have to be really careful because your mind, if you focus on your disease too much, you're going to get sicker and sicker and sicker right? Like there's actually been studies done that people who have an MRI, so if you show up with back pain, for example, and you have an MRI, then you get your MRI results back and it shows that you have a disc issue or whatever it is. The pain increases by, I can't remember the percentage, but it's pretty significant. And that's only because they're told that they have something wrong with them, right? And so getting that confirmed increases your pain because your, your, your brain is like, oh, I knew there was something wrong with me. May well, I, it's, you know, uh, what was me kind of thing. And so we have to be really mindful of how we treat our, our condition and to be, you know, not to be, you know, ignoring it because it's real and it's freaking painful, I know, but also finding that balance so that we're not just like getting completely buried in it. Just something to be very mindful of when you are looking for, you know, community. Uh, maybe don't go onto the online forums because to me, they're just super negative and people are just like, it, it's, it's too much. I, I get sicker. I can make myself sicker. I can make my pain increase. And I do that by Googling and by, you know, uh, uh, just kind of reading about it. And it's, I mean, obviously you're here, um, which is good. And like, it's, it's, you know, you have to, you have to find the balance of doing research and like learning about your condition and how to help yourself. But like that balance where it's going a little 
too far and you start joining you know all these communities and it's just kind of negative and also of course be care be 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 mindful of the the tone in these communities right like are they positive and like yes we can do this and you know oh i had a success today or is it more like oh well this is the third time i'm trying a new biologic nothing is working i can't get out of bed I don't want to hear that, right? Like that's just, that's not helping me. That's making me miserable hearing about that. So just be mindful on that. It's a little controversial, I know, but just just be mindful. Watch your mind because your mind dictates like everything. Okay. And then number 4 on my list of things to avoid is to not focus on the things that you can't do, right? But try to have a more positive outlook and focus on the things you can do. So I actually, right now, as I'm recording this, I um, hurt my back nine days ago now, today. Um, and, you know, I am, uh, I do weightlifting, I do handstands, and I do, like, acrobatic stuff, and I, I really love that stuff. And now I can't do that, right? For nine days, I have not been able to be on my hands because my back hurts so bad, which is super annoying. And I find myself getting, you know, I'm like, why can't I do this? Why can't I do this? But instead, what I try to do is focus on the things I can do. So, okay, nine days of this. Okay, I can't handstand. I can't lift weights, you know. But what I can do is I can do my physical therapy, which when I feel good and I can do my handstands, physical therapy is not fun. And I don't want to do it because it's boring, right? But now this is the perfect time because I want to exercise, but I can't do what I usually do. So I focus on kind of the boring basics instead. And it just, I see it as like a little, um, I don't know, it's almost like a little retreat for my back, right? I focus more on softness. I focus more on ease. I focus on gentle stretching, gentle strengthening, and the stuff that I usually don't have time for because I'm too busy with handstands and weightlifting, right? So I think like focusing on the things you can do and like trying to figure out ways to keep yourself motivated and positive even in times of like when you're in a flare right so I think instead of sitting here for me and just you know wallowing and crying uh, about not being able to do handstands I'm just like you know what but this is a great opportunity for me to focus on my physical therapy which in the long run is going to help my handstands as well right so trying to find ways to do that. So like maybe you're into, I don't know, crocheting and your hands are hurting really bad. And so can you maybe do puzzles instead or could you bake or could you, I don't know, maybe you, you watch um, something that I usually do as well if I'm really, really feeling not up for moving is, and I have to lay on the couch, I make that kind of productive. So instead of watching a bunch of movies or TV shows, I do something like uh, I want to learn photography. So I watch, you know, photography tutorials on, on YouTube or I watch uh, Photoshop tutorials, you know, like you can always, and then that way my brain, like somehow my mind feels more at ease because I'm focusing on, I'm not wasting my time during my flare, if that makes sense. And this might not be something that you relate to at all, but, but if it is just, just kind of a tip there is to, um, you know, focus on, trying to make it um, uh, like useful, even though you can't do the things that maybe you really want to do, but what can you do that are like smaller steps to still get to that goal, right? Like if you love crocheting and your hands, you can't even bake because your hands are hurting so bad. Can you watch tutorials and learn something else, you know, learn something about crocheting or or whatever it might be, and like that will make you better once you can once you can do it again, and you can just use this time to like gain all this knowledge, right? So just focusing, you know, try to avoid like getting stuck on the stuff you can't do when you're in a flare, and try to focus on the things you can do, and try to make the things that you can do really fun and exciting and purposeful. And number five, sorry, my dog is barking. Um, number five is try to avoid having poor posture. So this is something that comes with AS automatically, right? We kind of get into this posture here. Um, but to the best of your ability, try to not slouch too much. So if you're working on a computer all day, try to, you know, sit up straight, try to have a, a raised, uh, you know, you have a screen that's eye level, so you're not like this all the time. If you're on your phone a lot, try to maybe bring your phone up to your face so you're not down here. 
if you're driving a lot for work or for other reasons, just you know, um, have a lumbar support pillow. Um, and then take a lot of breaks throughout your day and really focus on your posture. So take some stretches, you know, do a little bit of gentle back bending, roll your shoulders. Just try to avoid putting yourself in that bad posture that AS kind of wants to force you into anyway, right? So to the best of your ability, try to not just do this automatically because then you're going to get stuck here much faster than, uh, than you want, right? So just uh, open up that chest, roll the shoulders back, Ooh, push your neck back, maybe do some chin tucks, you know, not very flattering, <laughs> but they're very good. So just trying to... Um, trying uh, to be mindful of your posture throughout the day and trying to, you know, cause we, I feel like even if you don't have AS, most people end up like this anyway these days because we're always on our phones, we're on our computers, we drive, we cook, everything is like this. And so we have to kind of oh, open it up, right? So those are my five tips for uh, things to avoid with ankylosing spondylitis. And then I have a sixth bonus tip for you, which is kind of, it shouldn't even have to be a tip, but I'm just going to say it anyway. Obviously, get proper sleep. Do not skip your sleep. Do not smoke. Don't drink too much alcohol. Don't eat a lot of junk food. So just try to be your healthiest self. And it doesn't have to be so, uh, you don't have to be perfect, right? But just try. Um, like it's fine to have fast food every now and then, but try to not have it every day. You know, if you, you know, don't have a cookie after lunch every single day, do it maybe once a week or something. Um, but just try to try to take care of your body the best you can um, and it will take care of you. So um, I hope this is helpful. Uh, as always, you can drop any questions down below. Um, I'd love to connect with you on Instagram as well. My handle on there is Elena from Sweden. Um, and, uh, yeah, let me know if you have any other, like, topics that you want me to cover in my next video. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to hit subscribe and like this video if you did enjoy it. And, uh, I hope to see you on Instagram and I will see you in my next video. Bye.